want some new specimen from the pathology department, at least uh, two to uh, four specimens, not more than that. At least the gallbladder specimen and appendix specimen. That will be the specimens that will be given will be very many will be clear to you. I don't think there will be any difficulty. And uh, I personally will go and see the specimen. If they are not at all good, we will not collect them. Otherwise, these will be given. Especially the gallbladder specimens are already damaged and I don't know whether how to express them. These are not at all maintaining their character. <laughs> so just few things. So one, two gallbladder specimens we want to take, that is one empyma, one mucosin. Another is the appendicitis specimen and uh, stomach specimen. These are our targets. I don't know whether we will be able to fulfill the target or not. Otherwise, this will be given. Okay. So, only if these specimens, not more than that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay. <coughs> Achha. Few things. Uh, before expressing specimens, you just make a drama in front of the examiner. Just you are looking at the specimen from the front, from the back, like that. And you are trying to identify the specimen and it's not known to you. Like that. <laughs> Only this thing you take time. Don't tell just rubbish. Just take time, see the specimen, then examiner will tell, ask you what is this. The simple answer will be the anatomical structure you are looking at. Not the pathology first. Just identify the anatomy. What is there and why you are telling that it is a kidney, nothing else. Like that. Or it is a stomach or it is a gallbladder, it is nothing else. Just express in your words that it is a this is such and such anatomical structure. Then the next question will automatically come what is the pathology here. Or whether it is an anti-mortem or a post-mortem specimen. All here are post-mortem, uh, anti-mortem specimens because we are surgeons and we are cutting it in a normal or a healthy uh, person. And all are following a surgical plane or a surgery like a cholecystectomy or mastectomy. Um, like that. So you must have some mark of surgery or over the specimen like a suture mark or any surgical plane or an incision mark will be there. So try to identify that thing and that will be asked. Achha. First the simplest specimen is a gallbladder. Everybody likes gallbladder. Achha. There are three here. One, two, three. But I don't know what is what. Achha. First thing, try to visualize. This is better. So, <coughs> just see. <coughs> what is the anatomy here? Uh, I'm explaining like this. I'm looking at it here, here, here. Okay. It's a pyriform shaped structure with a fundus body and neck. Or if you want to say Hartman's pouch, okay. Hence, probably it's a specimen of gallbladder stock. Ask or invite question from the examiner. Examiner will then ask you what is the pathology you want uh, you are uh, when you have it here. Then uh, this specimen, it may be mucosal, it may be empyma. It's very difficult to say because it has lost its uh, solemnness. Probably it was mucosal and it was empyma. It was man, hugely dilated and a big, big specimen was like that. And it was filled with formalin. And the main thing you know what is the pathology behind mucosal. Both the specimens are same. What happens when there is a big stone impacted at the Hartman's pouch? Just think about a big stone which can't pass through the cystic, small cystic duct. It is impacted. It is neither coming out through the cystic duct or nor it is falling back to the fundus. Uh, sorry, in the gallbladder uh, sac. And it is just impacted in the midway. That is in the Hartman's pouch. Then what happens? The uh, secretion or the uh, bile inside will be <coughs> they will be uh, trapped there and the water will be absorbed and more and more more mucus will be poured in and the day by day the thing will be dilated the wall will be uh, thinned out and like a balloon just think about a balloon what happened to a balloon if you give more and more air to it it will be thinned out and you will see the light is passing through it and uh, uh, there is no infection there so the wall is sterile and there are no gwengosh blood vessels, no a question of exudate or, or any patchy gangrenous chain, nothing there. It's a clean walled balloon like swelling and a Hartman's pouch must be, uh, must have an impacted stone. 
স্যার আমি ঋষি স্যারকে বলেছিলাম
no, almost a normal looking appendix, little bit of uh, fibrosis around it and you will not be able to uh, identify that fibrosis over there. You just say if it is a small appendix, it's a uh, subacute appendicitis, if it's a big and a uh, engorged appendicitis, uh, appendix, then it's acute appendicitis. That depends on you, how you will present that and examiner will ask you about the question. <coughs> okay, these are the three very, very important things.
and you have to uh, cover the abdominal contents before you are going to aspirate or uh, doing anything over the stress. So at least three to four mops are used to cover the whole abdominal viscera like uh, other part of the stomach, intestine and the liver and everything. Then we first we what we do first we aspirate the material with a big need, uh, needle and syringe like 50 cc syringe is a big needle. We introduce it. We tar, tar, uh, first we localize the cyst. Liver is a huge organ and cyst uh, may be in different uh, many areas. So before doing that, you have a CT scan and you will know that it is in the right side or it is in the upper part, in the lower part. Okay, you just localize it. You put your needle and you aspirate that. Some material will come out and you just throw it out and again rinse still with the, some school satellite inside. Okay, then you again re re and you then suck it out. Some little bit of spillage will be there and that will be tackled by your scolicidal agent and albendazole you have already given. And after that uh, you just clear the whole thing, the sand, hydrated fluid sand will come out and if these things are there, they, you have to take it out with the swab holder. You know what is swab holder? Yeah, swab big person. thing. So just before, you just take, take all the fluid first, then you remove them one by one. Sometimes they block the sucker uh, nozzles. You, we usually take two suckers ready. But it, otherwise, there will be problems of blockage. And one blockage means uh, there is more chance of dissemination during your surgery. So these are the two things. And a laminated membrane is there. Sometimes we take it out and we <coughs> we actually do the procedure that is known as de-roofing. We just remove the content and we de-roof the cyst wall. That is a cyst. We just take the uh, roof and we make it open. The mother cyst is never take, uh, removed. Ideally, it should be removed. But here, the procedures are followed here. It's not... A removal of the whole cyst or excision of the cyst is not done. It is just a de-roofing. Just you make the cavity open and you put a drain or momentum, whatever you want. And these materials are collected by that guy. That is the material. And the ideal operation is pericystectomy. That is the whole cyst along with the pericyst. That is the outermost covering that is made of the liver wall. You have to take it out. That means a liver resection. That is a major liver resection having all the risks of liver resection. So we here are not very expert and we are not having the uh, instruments also. That is why we <coughs> usually do not perform this liver resection and pericystectomy. But that is the ideal procedure. Old examiners will be happy with your answers. Uh, new examiner will it is difficult. Pericystectomy will be the answer. Next, a very important specimen, breast. It's a novel developer. Breast carcinoma is a very important specimen. First, identify that it's a breast. What are the things here? Very easy thing. Nipple areola. Arcona organini. The skin, कोनो organ है नहीं, इखाने आप कोनो organ हमारे skin शुद्ध बात दी ना, आ एक तो होते हमारे काशी में अपने नहीं, otherwise rarely possible skin with nipple areola and an elliptical incision with some fibro fatty tissue attached, that means it's a specimen of breast, okay? Then what is the pathology? The whole breast has been removed. Be careful. Very rarely we do this. So, the only one important indication is the carcinoma breast. So, what are the features of carcinoma? Nipple is retracted. There is some QD orange change here. Very difficult to see. Connect to Ache. QD orange change. And the lump. This is the lump here. Yeah. The normal architecture is this fibro fatty tissue. Granular, granular mother. The thing is a solid, mass like thing. So, this is not an ideal specimen. Not an ideal surgical specimen. Ideally, mastectomy, modified radical mastectomy. What we do here. We must have an axillary specimen, axilla or axillary fat along with it. So it's not there. So if you were asked what is the operation done, it is a simple mastectomy. You have to say because the axillary specimens are not supplied here. 
আমি যদি জানি না ব্রেস্ট স্পেসমেন্ট ওখানে পাবো কিনা ইফ ইট ইস দেয়ার আই উইল টেক ব্রেস্ট স্পেসমেন্ট দেখতে কারো ভুলার কথা না এত মূর্খ কেউ নেই আই থিং তাই তো আচ্ছা আর এটা নিয়ে প্রচুর क्वेश्चन হতে পারে আমি আর ডিটেইলসে যাচ্ছি না পেশেন্ট তো করতেই হবে ব্রেস্ট করতে হবে জানতে হবে এন্ড ইউ উইল বি আসক স্পেসমেন্ট পাস এর আগে না কেউ ভুল করো না তাহলে আমি বের করে দেব এক্সামিনেশন হবে কাল ধরে বের করব चेना जाना क्यों ना क्यों तुम्हें बोलो चुपी चुपी होते you are not a doctor man it may not be a surgeon but you must know what are the complaints of breast cancer and what are the complaints of testicular tumor if they are identified in a proper time in proper time they will be treated and the life will be saved so you must know it is your duty to know i am surgeon how na janbo na eram bapar ta noy ki so please know that acha ei ta identify korte hobe so the first question whether is a single specimen or a double specimen single, single specimen this is a single specimen please it's a cut open specimen this specimen is a good specimen so we are not going to change it with the spermatic cord there are no other specimen like this one cord along with the lobular structure which has been cut open acha probably this is test okay test is मोनोटोनियरेंस but just think about something else like teratoma you know teratoma contains all the three germinal layers like cartilage bones cakes and everything so the thing will be heterogeneous if it is teratoma at all so you will have a variegated appearance like somewhere it is hemorrhagic somewhere there is thin like appearance some thicker area some thinner area all are variegated but it's a homogeneous appearance very easy to identify so it's not semi nomadic but that's all the other questions of Over some minimum testes will be asked. This is the whole testes is a mass. Okay, this is all a separable mass. In clinically also you will get the testes is a mass. And <coughs> whether the finish is done before OT? No. no. What is the OT? Operation? High high amount of blood needed to be there. How? Why? What is high? What is inguinal? What is arterial? High means arterial to you know. high means as much as you can that means the spermatic cord we open the inguinal canal not from the scrotum we never breach the wall of the scrotum or skin because skin opening of a skin means skin metastasis we never do a pre op fnc if you think it's a tumor and you are suspecting it's a malignant tumor especially seminomorphous in a very young age you must remember this it's a very an uncommon thing it's occurs around teenage to 25 35 like that after 35 it is usually do not occur so if is a young male having a painless testicular lump with a loss of testicular sensation you think of this you just directly go a imaging like ultrasonography ultrasonography will give you maximum guidance they will say that is a homogeneous or heterogeneous mass involving the whole testes or as a part of a testes like this don't do anything no biopsy is required if you think that is a mass we are going to remove it just take the consent of the patient and go up, go for removal and for removal you need a high immune arterectomy high immune means as much uh, the bigger part of the uh, cord uh, yes. cord should be removed that is available in the inguinal canal so open the canal and you will get the cord from the up to the deep ring you are in there so you just Pull Pull the deep uh, cord as much as you can. Ligate it, ligate all the vessels, and cut it. And remove the testes from the inguinal region, not from the scrotum. 
So I am using my channel. I am putting my hand in the scrotum and take it out like that. Or you you make a uh, space and the testes can be removed through the superficial ring. It's not a very difficult job. Take it out and send it for the wife. Very important. Pathologist will say you that what is there. If it is a seminoma, they will tell you, or it's a teratoma, they will say, and there are various options available for this tumor. There are two different sites. One part is seminoma, one part is teratoma, or the non seminomatous tumor. So, <coughs> the seminoma, uh, first, my first step of the treatment in both the cases are high immunal orchidectomy. So, you have done it. The second or third step will be decided according to the biopsy. Okay, what question do you have? भलो this is a big vessel, ah. For a little kind of a big specimen, always there kind of big oil that can jar it that way. Big specimen with which is has been cut open with attachments of two omentum. He got say one is the greater omentum along the greater curvature and the lesser omentum along the lesser curvature. This is the lesser curvature uh, which has been kept intact. उटमेंटमेंटमेंटमेंटमेंटमेंटमेंटमेंटमेंटमेंटमेंटमेंटमेंटमेंटमेंटमेंटमेंटमेंटमेंटमेंटमेंटमेंटमेंटमेंटमे
So what is the treatment? Yeah, mostly gastrectomy. Surgery is the mainstay of treatment. The other treatments are not at all very important nowadays. Like chemo, radiotherapy has no role. Chemotherapy is a little bit effective. So first thing is this. What is the operation here? Name of the operation. Shit. Space cut on. What are you? What are you doing? Normal stomach? Video room. It's not a total gastrectomy. It's a partial gastrectomy. Only one can hurt. That is a pyloric gain I can see. It's a partial gastrectomy. Most of the patients harbors the ulcers in the close to the antrum or pyloric gain. So we just remove the part of the antrum up to the D1. Deodina first part and 5 cm from the macroscopic margin. We take a part of the stomach and we remove it. And the rest of the stomach will act as residual stomach. If there is total gastrectomy, when we do total gastrectomy? When the cancer is in the upper part, like the cardia or close to the esophagus, that is very common in the western world. In our country, it is still it is the commonest variety. That is close to the pyloric again. And if you do a partial gastrectomy, patients are fine. But if you have an upper part cancer, then it is very difficult to get a residual stomach because we have the main stay of treatment is put a five centimeter margin from the your ulcer base. So if you have a 5 cm margin and you are cutting a big portion of the stomach, at least you are going close to the cardia and there is no use of putting a very small residual stomach. That will not at all act because you are denovating everything. So a 5 cm from the cardiac end is very important. If you want to keep a residual stomach, like... <coughs> If the mass is here and you are calculating that it's a 5 cm margin and you are cutting from here and if you are not getting a 5 cm here, it is no use. This will never be a residual stomach if it is at least not 5 cm. Okay, if you are going like this, then go for a total. Then what who will act as reservoir or stomach? After total. Esophageo do not stop. Gastroesophageostomy. Who and why gastroesophageostomy have to form? That will act as a. You have to make a rule. Rule is always better for a partial ulcer. Cut here. This part will be here, and you just take this. This is the ruling. This is for a partial gastrectomy. And if you don't have this remnant, there's nothing. You have to attach this room. The room will act as stomach. And the, there will be a difficulty in the patient. Uh, initially, he has to be asked to take small meals at a time. Otherwise, there is no, <coughs> the room is very small. You can see. Hmm. Later, it will be dilated and it will little bit act like a stomach and it will be accustomed. With the skin covering and a growth in one side. And some surgical sutures. So it's a specimen of carcinoma penis. And again, the various questions are there like uh, what are the pre uh, <coughs> risk factors for development, what is the operation done here. Here total amputation of penis is done and what are the lymphatic drainage, how, <coughs> the, what is the marked difference between a testicular tumor and a carcinoma penis. What is the lymphatic supply? What is the lymph nodal basin for its drainage and for its drainage? What are the differences? Aortic because they are going running to the testicular artery. They are actually the branch of aorta. Mm. So they will go along the aorta. And this is inguinal uh, and a lingual uh, region. The inguinal lymph nodes will be enlarged and you can get it before operation. And you have to decide accordingly.
and there are various operative plans. Sometimes the inguinal lymph nodes are not metastatically involved. They are just uh, due to uh, involved because there are infections. Because it's a skin ulcer, you will get infection and that infection will cause enlargement of the lymph nodes in the inguinal region and that may not be due to the metastatic deposit. So we first usually add some antibiotics for the patients and at least for three weeks we try it. And if the sizes are reducing, then we don't have to go for immunal block dissection. Otherwise, if you think that these are involved in nodes, then you have to remove that immunal lymph nodes along with this code amputation of lymph nodes. And this is a very difficult operation for semi-anima or teratoma testis. You have to go for retroperitoneal lymph node dissection or radiotherapy, whichever is applicable. Any other question? I have to ask you to ask you to ask you to ask Hydronephrosis. They look after the gas. Why is this a kidney? This organ. Again, an enlarged organ with a thin wall. With a ureter attached with it. Ureter to kill us. The pelvic cortex and the whole thing is thinned out. The cortex is mainly thinned out and some ureter is not seen. This is the aseptic dilatation of the pelvic alicial system of the kidney due to some distal obstruction. The disease is not here. It is absolutely a normal kidney. It is just due to the pressure. Urine बढ़ता बच्चे ना urine is there accumulated आपको मतलब बढ़ता चाहिए ना very very top पूरा pelvic alveolar system is loaded with urine and due to that pressure necrosis the cortex has been atrophied and it is not working now it is a non-functioning kidney and it has been removed but it should not happen in a patient before the the when the obstruction is there there is mild hydronephrosis and patient is having any complaint or the imaging study has detected that there is hydronephrosis go for a relief of the obstruction then the process will be reversible and you will be able to save the kidney otherwise this will be the result if you allow the obstruction to go and there will be irreversible change of the cortex and the kidney will not do anything and later it will act as a source of infection. Suppose a patient is a diabetic patient having a prostatopegaly and nobody has cared for it and the kidneys are already hydronephrotic and mild hydronephrosis, moderate and severe hydronephrosis, are, they have been damaged. <coughs> now you are here, what to do with the kidneys and kidneys are now acting as a reservoir of infection because diabetes are prone to develop infection. A huge amount of urine, loaded. Stasis, there will be infection and it will act as a source of septicemia. So better remove it, it is not at all functioning. So that is the cause and what are the obstruction causes of obstruction? This stuff. There are many causes, unilateral hydronephrosis, bilateral hydronephrosis is very easy to remember if there is bilateral problem. So you think about it to the bladder, not above it. When there is unilateral problem, so think about the causes of unilateral. आर अथवा होते पारे दूध हो दवा होते पारे जो दी एक्सामिनर को पसंद हो ठीक है शे दर फर्स्ट जॉब इस तू आईडेंटिफाई दैट दैट इस द मेन जॉब यू विल पास इफ यू कैन आईडेंटिफाई देन द लेटर क्वेश्चन विल गिव यू मोर मार्क्स इन द बारे कुछ नहीं स्पेसिमेंट एक्स टू जॉब को डाले अमर मना देख